investigation to determine why a photo of Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis ended up on the phone of Thomas Crooks. He's the man investigators say tried to kill former President Trump. Good day, Mark Tagner is live at the Fulton County Courthouse with more on this developing story. Mark, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Buck. Uh, certainly uh, disconcerting and uh, disturbing to say the least. Uh, this issue now being looked at by the feds. I'm not supposed to be here tonight. Not supposed to be here. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Former President Donald Trump recounts the moments a would-be assassin tried to take his life. Now CNN reports a photo of Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis was found on the suspected shooter Thomas Crooks's phone. The information came out in a Secret Service FBI briefing. Crooks's motive for the assassination attempt isn't known. Law enforcement also found photos of former President Trump, President Biden, House Speaker Mike Johnson, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, and other political leaders. All the photos appear to have been downloaded from the Internet and weren't accompanied with any threats or messages. It was also revealed Crooks conducted online searches of Trump campaign events as well as both the Republican and Democratic national conventions. I want to make sure that we stay safe. Willis has spoken about the threat she's faced while investigating President Trump. She has a full-time security detail and had to move out of her house. All the typical racial slurs that you can imagine, um, um, they're very uh, grotesque things. Last year, a man from Alabama was indicted in federal court here in Atlanta for allegedly making threats against Willis, as well as Fulton County Sheriff Pat Labatt. Reporting live from the Fulton County Courthouse in downtown, I'm Mark Teichner for Good Day Atlanta. Buck, back to you. All right, Mark, thank you. Now Kamala Harris took the lead in all of the betting markets. Kamala Harris looked as if she's now the favorite in this race. And these things go up and they go down. And I've told you guys not to panic. And since America is likely, according to the betting markets, to put an incompetent California communist as president of the United States. Two weeks later, the sentiment around the lack of American leadership, the lack of American strength, and the lack of American economic power was proven today to be very dramatic. The NASDAQ has never in its history been down a 1,000 points, ever, even temporarily, until today. Earlier this morning, the NASDAQ hit that threshold temporarily. Now, today, of course, is two weeks, as we have mentioned, after Kamala Harris became the presumptive nominee. All around the world, the economy is on the brink. The top Japanese stock market index fell 12% today. In Korea, their market is down more than 8%. Markets in Europe are all down big. And here in America, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P have all dipped about 2%. Trillions of dollars of value. Poof. Lost. Eradicated. I encourage all of you, do not look at your stock portfolio today. Do not look at your 401k. That is all brought to you by Kamala Harris. Should you yeah. dare to criticize Kamala Harris, you are de facto a racist. That yes, the only yes. reason Gavin Newsom said the, that the Yeah, that the only reason that you would feel the need to criticize this black woman who's vice president is not that she's been completely incompetent in her job, which any impartial observer would conclude, but it has to be because of her skin color mm -hmm. and her gender. And Even so, though that's why she was put in the damn position well, to well, begin with. Joe Biden said publicly, I want a black woman. Mm -hmm. Right? And then he gets a black woman who is massively underperformed, which hasn't helped him at all. But no one's allowed to criticize her because if you do, you'll be called a racist. Mm -hmm. And I find, I find that one of the laziest tropes out there in modern society. It's a way of, I think we've discussed it before, but it's a way of stifling honest debate. It's a way of censoring legitimate criticism. Kamala Harris, you know, it's interesting. Nobody really knows her last name if you ask people. You know what her last name is? Nobody has any idea what it is. Harris. It's like Harris. I don't know. How the hell did this happen? What's your favorite curse word? <laughs> I can't say it. It starts with an M and it ends with a. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Not E-R.
too big to rig. Better be. That's too big to rig. We're going to make America great again. And that's for our veterans right there. And also, what else are you going to do to fix the job specifically? Thank you. Well, let's start with this. Uh, prices have gone up. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. And families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. Holy fucking shit. That's about having to stress and stretch limited resources. That's about a source of stress for families that is not only economic, but is on a daily level, something that is a heavy weight to carry. So it is something that we take very seriously, very seriously. And we know from the history of this issue in the United States that when you see these prices go up, it has a direct impact on the quality of life for all people in our country. So it's a big issue, and we take it seriously. Did you know that the Camilla Harris price hikes have cost the average family $28,000, that credit card debt is at an all-time high, and that basically the prices of things have never been like this ever before. There's never been anything like it. If you want to bring the prices down, if you want to have a good life, vote for Trump.